Welcome back, I'm Eric the Goblin, and we're going to continue this solo role-playing. This is episode two of using the Into the Odd system. Oh, I just noticed something. I just noticed a thing. I just noticed that I can get more space if I do this shit. Adjusting the camera, don't you know? Let's see. I think like this. I'm going to do a little bit like a this. It's kind of an angle now, isn't it? I mean, that's okay, I suppose. Things considered. But I would really like for the edge of my table to not be visible. Let's do like that, maybe. A bit like this. More suppose. You are now watching OCD Simulator, starring Eric the Goblin. You know what, that's, that's about good enough. We'll get that right there. So, excuse me for fiddling with my camera so much, but um, see that area right over there? I'm not a not a fan of that right there. Not a not so inter not, not not so much of an enjoyer of that little space right there. But it's all right. So where did we leave off last time? Well, both of our characters made it back from their expedition out in the wild. They started at Bastion. And they went out exploring, trying to find this place, this hamlet where a murder had taken place. And they, uh, they were compelled to do it. They were driven mad to try and find it. And we know that a couple of other people in Bastion also saw the same vision. And they also went out trying to find it. So our two characters went out. They, I think they got into a fight, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. There were um, an encounter with living with the rock swarms creatures. Yes, yes, yes. The exploding rock swarm creatures. All right. So they had an encounter with one. They managed to kill it before they took any damage, and then they came back home. Um, they got into an argument and decided that. They'd stay together anyway, probably because they don't really know anyone they can count on to go on this expedition. And they're kind of like driven, right? Like they, they, they need to, they need to understand what's going on. So I'm going to say that counts as their first expedition. Let's look at the rules here of Into the Odd. Let's see. After the expedition. We're going to look at that. Page 36. So, when a character has completed their list of requirements, may they move to the next experience level. Each time they advance a level, they gain D6 HP and roll D20 for each of their ability scores. If the roll is higher than the score, it increases by 1. So, at Novice, a brand new character, ready to go on an expedition, right? Second here, professional. You have survived at least one expedition. It didn't say anything about uncovering some great treasure or finding some secret. It said you have survived one expedition. 
So I'm going to say that counts. So they are now professionals. Let's put their level here. Or we'll do it like that for both of them. And we're going to write down that they are now professionals. So let's give them both some brand new HP. We'll get these dice over here. It's a little easier to see for me. Maybe not so easy for you guys to see though. Uh, we'll put that right there. And we'll get this pastel yellow die for Sambe and this clear die for Dorit. So these are their new HPs that they're going to get. Sambe gets five new HP, so he's a uh, Ten, which is pretty good, and Dorit only gets one. So now we have to roll a d20 for each of their stats. We're gonna roll first for Sambe. So if it's higher than the stat, it goes up by one. So Sambe's strength is five. A 16 is higher than 5, so it goes up by 1, so now 6. Let's try dexterity, 11. A 13 is higher than 11, so we're at 12. And let's check will. A 9 is just barely higher than 8. So that's not a 9. Let's try for Dorit, so higher than 11. She does not get an increase of strength. Higher than dexterity, 11. She gets a dexterity, 12. Goes up. And higher than 9. She does not get an increase of dexterity. All right. So our final stats look like Sambay Creed has a strength of 6, dexterity of 12, will of 9, and Dora Cross has a strength of 11, dexterity of 12, will of 9. 10 HP on Sambe, 5 HP on Dora. So I'm going to say that they're still out there looking, seeking out this Hamlet. So we'll start a brand new day. Oh, I kind of need another graph paper thing, don't I? All right, let's do that then. Keeping a log of what you're doing in a solo roleplay is how you save your game, guys. This isn't a tedium that you're doing just because. You're doing this because without this, you have no idea where to pick up from next week. You can't look back on the adventure either. You can't read this again and enjoy it all over. And if you're, um, if you're solo roleplaying so that you have something to use later on unless you make a log of it you you don't have a module you don't have an adventure so always keep your log let's see we make our characters over here and we'll do like that for now i am struggling to get everything on this camera <laughs> but that's all right so this is Maybe like that. We don't need this right now. Day two. We'll start at 8 a.m. And we start wherever Bastion is. And Bastion is here at C8. X. C8. So where do our two adventurers want to go? Well, they know what's in this direction. I didn't realize it, but they've uncovered basically an entire uh, little hex flower here. So more than likely, 
they're going to travel in one of these three directions because it is unknown. Um, I'm going to say that this is one, two, and three, and we're going to roll this as a d3. So the count is a two. They're going northwest. Okay, so we're going to need the sandbox generator. Let's see. And our starting hex is a grassland. So let's get a D10. That's a six or more grassland. Okay. So we know that entering a grassland takes about an hour. We've already decided that. So that means our next log is 9 a.m. And this is hex B7. We'll mark that, but this is grasslands. Let's get our um, sandbox generator. Let's figure out what's here, if there's anything important, interesting. We roll a d6. A two is a landmark. So let's go figure out what kind of landmark this is. We'll grab a big die and a small die. Big die is for the first one, and small die is for the second turn. A five artificial landmark and a three means it's an empty location so five and a d10 artificial though right so this one four ruins nine a raised village huh let's put that down icon of it right here. We can do the houses, right? And we can put it maybe a skull there. It's a bad skull, whatever. Is this what they're looking for? Let's take a D6, and on a one or two, this is what they're looking for. They find the strange statues around the perimeter of the village. This is what they're looking for. This is what they're here to find. Okay. Okay. Something interesting is going on. Let's make a note of this. They find the strange statues in their vision. We have to generate this village now, don't we? Maybe Sandbox Companion here has an idea for that. Let's see. We want... We can do a ruins, right? The Rage Village is basically a ruin. Ruin Generator. We know it's a village. Let's see. Hovel, Villa, Tower, all this. Blah, 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 blah. Hamlet village. It is a possibility. So let's go look at this. The nature of the ruin and decay. So, oh, that's not helping. Let's 
try that again. 26, that's better. So the six here, sunken. And the two means it's moderately sunken. Well, let's work with that. I said raised village, but I'm going to change that. We're going to erase this and we're going to write sunken village. And we'll put some water here. You know what makes sense? The river is coming from that direction. So we'll put this here. And we'll roll now to see what direction the river takes from here. One, two, three, four. It goes straight down. It's weird. In fact, it's so weird I don't even like it. I'm going to say that because that doesn't make much sense. This is like a, a sump or a lake. And the river continues past it. Remember, you don't have to stick with the dice if you don't want to. They are tools, they're not your masters. And if you decide that something would be better a certain way, why don't you just go for it? It's your game. Stick to the rules for combat and all that, but if you feel like there was something would be better, or if something doesn't make sense with a certain role, then, you know, it's your prerogative. It's your game. So we're here at the sunken village. We need to generate what it looks like. What else was there over here? 26, I think, right? Or was I mistaken? I think I was mistaken. Let's go back here and look at the index. 19, that was. So let's look here. Inhabitants. Why are you sliding like this? That's very rude of you. Let's try it again. There we go. That is no longer a slidey die. 21. So one, chimeras, infested with chimeras. Ugh. Um, I'm not too crazy about that. I'm not... I'm not too crazy about that. So let's write that down. Let's just stick with that. Let's make some notes here. B7. Sunken. Village. Now, what does it suggest for inhabitants? Well, you know what? We already know they've got chimeras here. How do we get from here to here? I've got to figure out how to do that. So we know that we have chimeras and they were infestation of chimeras. So 21 and from this 23 I know that this is 2 humanoid small but I know that we already said chimeras right here so I guess really at this point it's just figuring out how strong a monster I want to work with since our characters are just starting off. I'm going to use the one digits and say, like centaurs. 
I don't know if that's the way you're supposed to do it, but that's how we're going to do it. Sunken village. Uh, it is infested with centaurs. Let's get this. Now we're playing into the odd. We're not playing D and D, so maybe our centaurs are vastly different. Let's look at the creature generator here for inspiration. Yeah, we have creature inspiration. We're gonna do this. We're working with the the base of a centaur. 34. Scabs and sores. Oh, I don't like that at all. But that's very evocative. Let's write down what our centaurs look like. Centaur. Scabs. And sores. So clearly the disease. And that's at 93. And it says pike for form. So I'm going to say that they're fisher people. And they catch fish with spears. Let's roll and give them stats. Um, let's see. Strength. Let's roll two on strength. So that's uh, eight. I might roll one more. Oh shit. What have I done? So that's 11, 12, 13. 13 strength. Let's do two for dexterity. That's a 10 dexterity. It says unless you note otherwise, it's 10. So we don't need to make a note of that since that's already what it's gonna be. And will is eight. So the two things that are different about it, it's got a strength of 13, will of eight. And let's give it HP, six HP. Now we already said that our centaur is a fisherman that uses spears. So we'll write down spear. Let's look up stats of items and in into the odd book so we get an idea of how much damage a spear should do. So a field weapon. Probably Probably a D8, and it's using a, it's a bulky weapon. D8 bulky. Oh, right. we got to figure out that weird thing it does. We know it's doing a disease of some kind. Here we go. Let's get the percentage dice out. 14. So what is our 14? Colossal size? I, I, I don't like that. I don't like that. Because that means that we got a bunch of centaurs in here because it's an infestation of colossal centaurs. Nah, way, man. No way. I'm vetoing that right there. 52. Conjures illusions. That's slightly better. Let's do that. So I'm going to say it's scabs and sores. Give it an armor of one. Whenever you hit the centaur-like creature, its skin gives way. And you don't actually do damage to it. You just 
hit the scabs and sores which protect it. And we'll say Conjure Illusion will save or lose your turn. Lose turn. As you're stuck gazing at this illusion. So we know it's an infestation. How many of these things are in this village? Let's roll 2d6. Let's get this over here. There are eight. Eight of these centaurs. Let's see. At this point, I feel like we need to understand what's going on here. There was a murder here in this raised in this sunken village. The statues are here, and there are centaurs all around. Now, what's going on here? Was that ghost that they saw last time some kind of centaur? It must have been. Or it might have been a, a human that was killed by a centaur. Let's go back and read our notes so we get a little more understanding of what's going on. We only wrote murder, so it's entirely possible that someone from Bastion came to this town, was killed by these centaurs, and in their last dying breath sent out a distress call psychically. Oh shit, there we go. They sent out their spirit to call for help. And our two characters are the ones who came to answer it. Let's see. How many centaurs are we going to encounter? Let's get a D8. And we'll roll this. For how many are... Oh my lord, seven. So this first fight takes place. And Dort and Sambe encounter seven of these leper centaurs. We'll get a couple of these tokens out, just to keep track. So here are our tokens. And because I don't think, let's say three, six, seven, there we go. I don't think that they were expecting to run into that many. There's a chance that they got surprised. So let's get these hood pointers. Uh, let's see. We're going to use this rainbow one for Dorit. I'm going to throw that dice off the side of my table. I'll be right back. Sit back down in my chair. Rainbow dice for Durrit. Clear dive for Sambe. We're rolling their will to see if they're surprised. If they succeed, they're not surprised and they go before the monsters. And if they are, fail, they go after the monsters. So, pastel color for Durrit. She fails, so she goes after monsters. This could be very bad. And 12. They both go after the monsters. Oh my god. I think they check dexterity instead of well. Let's go. Let's go look. Maybe I'm maybe I'm mistaken. Let's see. So will save to see reaction if it changes. 
Uh, it doesn't say anything about a will save for avoiding ambush. Encounters. Here we go. Characters and monsters should all have something they desire and are working towards. A drive. We need to give our centaurs a drive. We'll do that in a second. Do, 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 do. don't remember where I saw it. I, I'm, I'm certain that you rolled dexterity to check for... Oh, here it goes. If there is a risk of being surprised, characters must each roll a deck save or be unable to act on the first turn. On their turn, players can act in any order they wish. Yeah. So, if there's a chance for them to be surprised, it's a deck save. So I did that wrong. Let's do that correctly. So, pastel for Dorit, clear for Sambe. 12 on each. Okay, Dorit still fails. She's after. And so does Sambe. It doesn't matter. Okay. So, we need to check for reaction from these monsters. I think that they're hostile already. And we're going to check. And Dorit is the one who is leading. She's going to try and talk to them. It does not work in her favor. They are hostile immediately and they start attacking. Oh my god. Well, this seems like it's going to be a game over very quickly for Dort, and, uh, Dort Cross and Sambe. Let's get our D6, D8s. We're going to roll. I mean, I could do one last thing. I can roll the reaction for the Centaurs. We could do that. No. It's an unfavorable reaction on both sides. There's no avoiding this. There is a fight. First centaur takes a swing and hits one of them. We'll roll this on an odd, it's Dorit. An odd, it's Dorit. Two HP. So she's taking two hits. We're gonna do the same thing again. We'll just put this guy up here to show that he's attacked. And even it's Sambe. Three hits. One, two, three. On an odd, it's Dorit. Four points of damage. One, two, three. And one point on strength. She needs to make a strength check to avoid critical damage. Now it's ten. She's okay. She can keep fighting. Odd on Dort. Five damage. One, two, three, four, five. She needs to make a strength check again. This time it's um, 11 minus six. So she has to roll five or under. She's wounded. She's critically wounded. We'll turn her to the side to show that. That means all attacks will only go on Sambe from now. Two points of damage. One, two. He's at half. And the last one. No, one of the last ones. Four. One, two, three, four. I guess we don't really need that, right? We said that already. Seven. Oh my goodness. That knocks him out completely. He's at zero HP, zero strength. Two, three, four, five, six. Six 
Sambe and Dorit go to the sunken village to seek out this vision and they are beset upon by these sickly centaurs. They're ambushed and they're slain. And that is the end of these two characters. Wow. Let's write this down. Encounter. Seven centaurs. Surprise. Sambe. And Dorit. Slaughtered them. My goodness. So there you go. That is the end of Sambay Creed and Dort Cross. We're going to stick them over here to the side. And we're going to end this adventure here. This day. We're going to say... The Mystery... Of the sunken village has become uh, what I want to say. It's not more powerful, but people know about it. Infamous. That's what it is. Infamous. So we gotta make some new characters now. Because without new characters, we have no adventure. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna set up a few new cards, new index cards. And once I do that, we'll roll up some new characters. So I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. So, our last characters perished. They were slaughtered by these leprous centaurs that are existing, living, dwelling in this sunken village close by to Bastion. 
they die right over here. So we need to make some new characters. And this time I've got color-coded index cards. So we're gonna start top to bottom with the blue card. And that looks like a 16 strength. That's really high. Let's do dexterity. And that's a 15, wow, okay. And last is Will. That's a 10. We'll roll 1d6. He's got an HP of 6. Damn, they're all my good rolls. So now let's get our yellow card, which is also banned. Uh, and this is 8, 9, 10, 11. We got 11 strength. Let's do over here. That's a 16 dexterity. I don't know why I'm rolling so good right now. And a will. Will roll. So that is 5. It's 11. And let's roll our HP. 5. Okay. 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 Let's get our starting packages for these two characters. We'll do the yellow card first. Highest stat on the yellow card is 16. So we go to 16. And he's got 5 HP. So he starts with these things right here. Pistol. D6. He starts with acid. Animal repellent. and a prosthetic hand. He's one-handed. All right. That's a very interesting kind of character. Our next character, his greatest stat is a 16, and he's got six HP. So we go to 16, and we go to six. So he starts with a pistol, which is D6. A bomb, a shovel, and he's got glowing eyes. All right. We got to give these people names now. So let's go in back here into the odd. Odd, odd, oddpedia, I think that's what it's called. Oddpendium, it's much better. Um, we need the character maker. Let's see. Doot. Here we go. So let's get a percentage dice out. That looks like a 60 to me. So 60. Oren. That's fine. I can work with Oren as a name. We'll put that on the yellow card since it's at the top. Orin. Let's roll this again for a surname. That looks like an 88. Orin Terin. That's a terrible name. Uh, let's roll for our blue card. It looks like a 73. We got, it's either Pip or Pipita on an odd, it's a woman. Odd, it's a woman, Pipita. Let's go here, we'll take this. Pipita, we'll roll this. That's a 52. And 52, Lobel, Pipita Lobel. 
Okay. There are our two brand new adventurers. Now, we need to give them a purpose, something to do, a drive. Let's get the companion out. Let's go to here. We'll get the D30. Oh, no, you don't. And that's looking like a 10. Pepita Lobo is driven by greed. She's a greedy person. Okay. Now we need one for Orin Terran. 12. 12 is driven to impress. I'm just going to say driven to impress Pepita. So, Orin and Terran. Orin and Pepita are uh, urchins who. They're like boyfriend and girlfriend, I guess, or best friends or something. There's some kind of close relationship here. Pepita thinks that their lot in life is rotten and that they should do better. And Oren just wants to do whatever he thinks will make her uh, Pepita happy. He wants to impress her. So let's take a look here. We'll say that it's day three of our adventure. start at 8 a.m. And we're at Hex C8, which is Bastion. And they don't receive any crazy vis vision, but they've heard talk in the town of Bastion about that sunken vi vi village. About the murders that are going on there. Pepita thinks all that's waiting for them there is death. And they're not going to improve their lot in life anyway. So she thinks they should look for something to rob, something to steal, something to grift. And Oren, because he wants to impress her, agrees and leads the way. We're rolling a d6 to figure out where these guys are heading out. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. They would know, though, that that was the direction. Wouldn't they? No. They wouldn't. Okay. They wouldn't know that. They just know that, that there is a thing. This village. They wouldn't know what direction it is. So we're going to say they head northwest. Travel. Northwest. And we already know where that's taking us. 9 a.m. Hex B7. Sunken Village. Let's roll to see if they encounter anything. On a one, it's an encounter, and on a two, it's uh, clues of a monster. It's a fucking encounter. Jesus Christ. Are we going to get two more kills? We're going to roll the d8. Three. Three centaurs. All right. One, two, three. Here they are. And I'm going to say this time... Because it's such a small number, there's no chance for an ambush, and our characters go first. Let's look at what a bomb does. I'm not certain. I know that one of them starts with one. Let's see. Bomb. It does D10 blast. Let's see. What is a blast? Blast weapons cause damage to all targets in an appropriate area. 
rolling separately for each. If in doubt as to how many targets are affected, roll the weapon's damage die. So I know that a bomb is D10. Alright, let's see if this bomb will get all three affected. Yes. Okay. So, first centaur. First centaur takes three hits. We're going to use this to keep track of that. Second centaur. Come on. There we go. Four damage. And last centaur. Four damage. Not a single one killed by this blast. But they're all heavily wounded. And that was Pepita. She used her bomb. We're going to get rid of that. And we'll keep a note of that. Encounter. Three centaurs. Uh, Pepita used a bomb. Damaging all three. Now we're up to Orin. What does acid do? Let's take a look at what acid does. Because again, I'm new to this game. Let's see. Acid, D6 damage burns through most materials. I don't think he's going to use that right off the bat. He's going to use his pistol. D6. So we grab a D6. And he decides... He's going to pick one at random. So this is a 1 or 2, 3 or 4, 5 or 6. 1 or 2, the first one. And he shoots it for 6 damage. The centaur is annihilated. Orin shoots and kills one centaur. So now it's our centaur's turn. First one is going to try and do an illusion. So we'll roll a d6. Uh, on an odd, it's Pepita who's targeted. It's an even. Orin's targeted. Orin needs to make a will save or he loses his turn. He loses his turn. We're going to put him sideways so that we know that. This guy is acted. Now it's this guy. Uh, I'm going to say that he swings his spear. So we're going to roll this and a d6. On an odd, it targets Pepita. Five damage on an odd, Pepita. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Pepita goes, takes a shot with her pistol. Um... On an odd, she targets the first guy. On even, second guy. So, five damage and destroys that centaur. We'll make a mark of that. One centaur is conjured an illusion against Orin. So Orin is confused for one turn. And Pepita was hit by this centaur. So that's their turn. Orin gets to come back now. But the centaur gets to attack. We're rolling a d8 and a d6. On an odd, it's Pepita. It's an odd, Pepita. Two damage. So one... And now she needs to make a check against critical damage. She's at 15 or lower. She's okay. Okay. The centaur swings at her with the spear. P 
Lupita takes a shot with her pistol. That doesn't count. Two damage and destroys the last centaur. Peter is damaged pretty badly. And Orin is okay. Orin, I'm going to say, has a crush on Pepita and wants to get her out of here. He thinks that this isn't a good place to be. There's clearly nothing of value. And Pepita, of course she's driven by greed, not self-preservation. She doesn't want to leave here without something of value. So she says to Orin, no, we're not leaving. I'm not leaving here until I get my hands on something. So they are exploring the sunken village. Let's say that they have to make will saves now. And the will save is to avoid those statues as they explore the sunken village. If they fail their will save, they're mesmerized by these statues. The clear will be for Pepita. Pepita is captured and mesmerized by these statues. But Orin isn't. Uh, I'm going to say that on a one or a two, centaurs come hearing the gunshots. Two, they're approaching and Orin knows this. So he has really no choice but to put Pepito on his shoulder and drag her back to town. So he's going to escape. We're going to roll a d20 and do his 16. He gets out. All right. Let's make a note of that. Orin flees with Pepita. We're going to reduce the number of centaurs because we killed three. And now it should be five remaining. Where do they flee to? Let's see. We're here. We're going to roll. One, two, three. They flee back to Bastion. So it is now 10 a.m. 10 a.m. They're back at C8, Bastion. Pepita's really mad. They take a short rest, and Pepita gets back all her hit point protection. Orin insists that they go somewhere else to find treasure. And Pepita can't really disagree with him. So after a short rest, which is 10 minutes, we'll do, we'll write down a short rest. 10 minutes. They head back out. One, two, three. They head towards the southeast. Travel. Towards. South, east. I'm just going to start initiate, uh, uh, abbreviating it there. Um, and that is grassland. So it would be 11 a.m. And they're in hex D9. And that is this dungeon. Let's see if there's an encounter. On a one, there's an encounter, and two, there's signs of a monster. Nothing. But PETA thinks this is an opportunity that they can't pass up. This is what they're out here for. And Orin says he'll go in with her. At that point, we're going to start exploring this dungeon. 
so let's grab the sandbox generator and we're not gonna do all the steps for like a mega dungeon because that's a lot but we will we will start building this dungeon out let's see I think there's an example here yeah there's an example all right so let's start by drawing out staircase say it goes down 30 feet. And we'll bring out and we'll follow the steps by steps. So a corridor is measured in lengths of six squares sections. So we're going to roll a d6 and follow that. This first section is six squares. One, two, three. Four, five, six. So now we roll for features. It's a d12. And that's a six, I think. Yeah. Six is one door. So we roll a d6. And two means it's on the left. So over here. We can roll a d4 plus one to determine exactly on what side of the wall it is. That's a one, so the door would be right here, along the stairs. And we're gonna figure out what's at the end of the corridor. We should mark down that this is turn one. Turn one. Descend stairs. Let's figure out what's at the end of this corridor. We need a D8. A three is a T intersection. So it's like this. Our characters go into the first room. We're going to roll a d6 and follow this. A 1 is a medium room. That means that a medium room is a d4 plus 2 in width and length. So, uh, I, I think this was a 1 and I changed it. And this room is 1, 2, 3. So we'll do... We'll say it's like that, and five. One, two, three, four, five. It's our first room. So we need to figure out what's in here. A two, it's an empty room with a 15% chance of treasure. So that means we're gonna roll this, and if it's 15 or lower, there may be treasure. No treasure. Um, empty rooms. We're going to roll on page 75 to get an empty room and figure out what's in here. Empty room. 72. Puddles of blood in this room. So turn two. We're going to label this one. Room one. Enter room one. We're going to get this little red marker here, and we know it's got puddles of blood. We can mark that here.
Okay. Let's generate more. How many additional doors are in this room? It takes a D12 to figure that out. 12. There's a secret door. A D6 will determine its location. A 3 means it's on the left. So if this is the front, that's the left over here. Let's roll. A D6. And we're going to ignore fives. One. Secret door right here. What does our secret door look like? Well, we're going to roll a D6 again. Three. It is camouflaged. But what does the camouflage of this secret door look like? That doesn't count. Six. It looks like a wall. All right. They don't actually have a chance to find it, to be honest. We got to figure out a clue. So we'll roll a d12. 10. Oh, interrupted trail of blood. Okay. So those blood puddles. One of them continues past to the south. Both of our characters know there must be a secret room there. And they spend time trying to open it. Let's say that... They make a strength check to avoid uh, spraining themselves, overexerting themselves, opening that secret wall, secret door. So we're going to get two D20s. The clear one will be for Pepita. And we're chesting strength. They're fine. And they force that door open. So we need to now generate that next room. Whether it's a room or a corridor. So a D6, let us know. It's a corridor. So we go back to one. We roll this. And a five means that this would be five sections long, but we already know that it can't go straight down. It's got to go this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three, six. And I'm just going to end there because I can't actually go any further. Remember, we need to avoid any rolls that don't make sense. So we're going to roll for this first section. 11. There's a secret door. And we're going to roll on that. So it is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we're going to say that it's over here. And we have to do the same thing for the second section. A 2 means there's one door. And we'll roll um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So it's right here. One, two, three, four, five. Right here. And on the right side. So if this is left, this is right. We have to figure out what that secret door is about. Let's see. A D6 is a camouflaged secret door. And it can be found. Looks like a wall. And the clue to finding it, there is no clue. So they don't actually have a chance to find that right there. So turn three.
Oh, you know what? I had to do a wandering check right there. Clues. These blood puddles are the clues. Monster check. Monster check. No monster. Turn three. Enter secret door. Hallway. Turn four. They're going to go down towards that door. We have to do another monster check on here. So right at this door. No monster. No. And they're at this door. They're going to open it right now. So let's see. Um, let's first figure out if it's a room or a door. A door located in a corridor always opens to a room, so we don't need to roll for that. Let's roll a d6. Uh, two means it's a medium-sized room. So a d4, this is a two, plus two is four. So one, one, two, three, four. And we'll roll again. That's another two. One, two, three, four. It's our room right here. Let's label this room two. Enter room two. And now we roll on the type of place it is. A two, it's empty, which means that there is a 15% chance for treasure. No treasure. Let's figure out what kind of empty room it is. We roll percentage dice, 30. This empty room has a dummy door, which can put this here. It's not actually a door. Let's check to see how many doors are in here. We roll a d12, six. There's one door. We roll a c6. And six means that if this is the front, then another door is here, and this is an actual door. And you know what? I think we're gonna end this right here. Because I'm getting kinda tired, and I feel like we have here the making of something interesting. So for now, we'll just make a note that they are on turn five. They're going to be on turn five. And we haven't done the monster check or anything like that. So Pepita Lobo and Orin Terran are in room two of this dungeon. Let's give it a name. Let's give this dungeon a name real fast. I feel like that's important. Even if they don't know it, I want to know it. So we roll a 20 first. Eight. This is... I'm going to write this down in purple. The Desolated... And we're going to roll a d12 for the next part. The Desolated Maze. And we need a theme. It's optional, but we're going to do it. 11. There is no theme. So they have entered the Desolated Maze, which exists to the southeast of Bastion. 
and they are in there exploring. So next time we pick up, we'll get our two characters further into this dungeon and figure out what's in here and what's worth stealing. Until then, this has been Eric the Goblin, and I wish you all a wonderful day.